Greetings, friends and fellow Bible study enthusiasts. Del Puckett here. And in this video here, I want to do a compare and a contrast. I actually have a little uh, friendly competition between the King James and the New International Version, 1984 version. So this is going to be kind of a Bible study, but it's like I said, it's going to be more of a compare and contrast between what the two verses say. And I was just curious, you know, I got these two different Bibles laying around here. King James and this uh, New International Version. This is that the New International Version is actually a parallel between the New International and the Message, which is also very interesting reading, especially especially when you're familiar with the King James and then you read these other translations. It's like hmm, interesting. But anyhow, um, as far as a competition is concerned, um, I just want to read these in parallel. We're going to go, like I said, between the King James and the New International Version. And we're going to judge or critique or analyze, however you want to say it, uh, observe the differences, mainly the differences. And then we're going to, um, again, score points. Does the King James win here or does the NIV win here or is it a tie or is it, um, what do they mean? You know, and then, and then after we decide which, which one is better, we have to ask ourselves why. On what basis are we considering one versus the other? Um, now, I'm not going to be consulting the original Hebrew uh, necessarily. If you're reading along here and you have access to like the internet or the computer, uh, you can go to any of those Bible sites and get multiple translations. They, we, they will even give you the Hebrew and the Greek. So you can actually compare. And then you can make a decision was, you know, which, which one of these translations is right based on the original language. And, you know, so, so any, I understand, you know, we, we read English and both of these are English translations and the original I know is much more, you know, uh, of a complete version. You know, obviously the Lord chose to embed his message in, in the Hebrew language for a reason, but we're, in, but we're English speaking and, and we understand this. So anyhow, uh, one thing I did notice here on this new international version, I opened it up to the, the date on it here, 1984. I've, I've always, it's been my understanding, um, based on opinion, that the 1984 is, is the best version of the New International Version. I think subsequent, um, what do you call it, uh, publications have become like gender neutral and, um, you know, what, whatever, politically correct. Uh, that's just what I've heard, and I have read a few of them in the in the New International Version, and, and to be honest with you, I, I didn't even recognize the text so much, so it was kind of changed so much. But anyhow, uh, that being said, we're going to... Um, oh yeah, I, I wanted to read this to you here. This is like their, their vision statement here. The, again, this is the New International Version. This is the very first page, right, the, the copyright page. And here at the bottom here it says, The purpose and passion of the International Bible Society is to faithfully translate publish and reach out with God's word so that people around the world may become disciples of Jesus Christ and members of his body. So, you know, that, that sounds like a pretty good vision statement to me. So, so, so kudos to the, to the NIV. You're, you're already starting off the round with, with um, a bonus there. Okay. So uh, I decided to do Psalm 32. Why? Uh, no particular reason. It's like Psalm 23, but backwards. No, Psalm 32, I just, seriously, I just opened the Bible. I was just, like I said, I was curious. What's the difference here? And so I just kind of opened it up, you know, kind of played that, what they call it, uh, Bible roulette. You know, I don't, I don't, if you're going to play a game, might as well make it fun game, right? So we're going to have a little competition, a little wah, 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 wah. Okay, so, um, rock, paper, scissors, we're going to start off with um, King James or NIV. Again, this is Psalm 32. Uh, in fact, I tell you what, I tell you what, how about this? How about pause this video, pause, and you reread this. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, I think you'll benefit more from this Bible study if you pre-read the text before we kind of dive into it together. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say, let's go ahead and just pause the video, boom, hit that pause button, reread. Read. It doesn't matter what translation you have. If you don't have the King James or the NIV, don't, don't worry, don't worry about it. Whatever translation you got, just kind of give it a, a peruse real quick and then unpause this video and then we will continue. All right, so me and the cat, we played rock, paper, scissors and I won. Um, and so I flipped a coin, called it in the air and King James won the toss. 
And then I asked King James, does he want to go first? And he, defer he deferred to the NIV. So we're going to start off reading the NIV. Again, this is Psalm 32. And I'm going to go ahead and just read it all the way through. I know we, I said pause so that you could read it. That's because I wanted you to read it first before we read it together. But it, anyhow, if you, if you didn't do that, it's still not too late. You can do it right now. Um, I'm going to start reading the, the NIV. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groanings all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my, transg my transgressions to the Lord. And he forgave me and, he, and, he, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, which must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. NIV chapter Psalm 32. All right. Um, now the King James Version. King James, Psalm 32. Blessed is, blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night my hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Um, this one here has the Salah, which is, um, from what I understand, it means pause, contemplate, meditate, just take an internal check, and then go. Verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. Or pause and think about it. All right, this is heavy stuff, guys. This, this actually is, that's what I'm saying, dude. This is a heavy stuff. This is a Bible study. For everyone, oh, I'm sorry, verse 6. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto, unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall encompass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. King James. Um, okay, now right off the bat, I can tell, I can tell you just because um, for some reason the King James has like the sound of authority. I don't know if it's that old... English language or um, the poetic, whatever the case is, is like in my heart, my feel more um, like the King James is, is weightier and more legit. Okay, that's that's just my opinion, um, but that's again that's based on just just kind of a just kind of a general um, overall. I guess you could call the King James uh, like an anointed uh, version. And again, it's the familiarity of the these and the thous and the thus and all that stuff, whereas there's none of that in the NIV. 
Now, that being said, the NIV um, really flows, man. It's just like, you know, it's kind of, you know, um, you don't stumble on the these and the thous. And so you can kind of, and the words are, are like more familiar, I guess. Um, like, you know, there's some of the words in, in the King James, like waxed. You know, we don't use really that term, you know, unless you're like waxing the car. You don't like wax old. It's kind of like, you know, the, the, the moon waxes and wanes. It's like it grow, it go, it goes in a direction. It waxes old. So, yeah, so so the uh, the King James, again, it's, it's maybe a loftier language. And so just as a general reading, we haven't gone through the verse yet. It's just as a general reading, I tend to favor the King James uh, flavor as opposed to the New International Version, which uh, doesn't quite have quite the boom, the punch. You know what I'm saying? So first round goes to King James. Okay, beginning the second round. The first round was the, the general reading through. The second round is verse by verse. Now, um, there's only 11 verses. So this is going to go quick. So stick around. So I'm going to start off here with the King James. It says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's the King James. The NIV says, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. So right off the bat, um, the transgression in... Uh, well, it says here, transgression and then sin. And over here it says, transgressions, plural. And sins, plural. So you have transgression, singular in the King James. Sin, singular in the King James. Whether you have transgressions, plural, and sins, plural, in the NIV. And the other, the other thing, it says, are forgiven in the NIV. And it says, is forgiven. So these are subtle differences, you know. Uh, is my sin is forgiven or are forgiven? There's kind of two different things. One's like a like a past tense and one's like a present tense, right? Um, so look, again, those, those are the contrasts between those two. Now, who, who wins in that one there? And it's kind of hard to say, man. Uh, you know, I say that's a, that's a tie. Again, you know, do I get anything? I, 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 what I get from reading them both is that, you know, sin is obviously singular and plural. And that also that our, you know, blessed is he who's transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered you have the whole idea of uh being forgiven and covered but it, it's the word before that is it is forgiven is covered or are forgiven and are covered those are so, subtle differences but if you read them both you kind of get a double takeaway so again this is a tie in my opinion verse one is a tie all right so verse two blessed is the man uh, i'm sorry I, sh I should tell you first um uh, New International Version. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in, in whose spirit is no deceit. Again, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is no deceit. Okay, that's a strong verse, dude. I don't care what, what you think about it. That's a strong verse. Now, ver King James, verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Okay, boom, come on, dude. Dude, I'm sorry, dude. Verse two goes to the King James, because uh, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth. Come on, man, we just we just leveled up, man. Imputeth not iniquity. Okay, that's those are two, boom, boom. Instead of uh, blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. Again, I get, I get it, I get, I get the idea here. But in this case here, um, Dude, King James scores. Imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no guile. King James. New International Version. In whose spirit is no deceit. Hmm. Deceit or guile? Which one has the flavor, guys? Which one has the flavor? I say I go with guile again. In, 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 and why? Because, you know, deceit is you can find deceit kind of all, you know, throughout the Bible. But you don't really find guile. That much and so wherever you find it you gotta get you gotta you gotta go with it right because again it's just one of those interesting words so we got three interesting words that we don't see in the modern language in, imputeth iniquity and guile all right so verse two king james sorry guys i'm king james is winning so far it's a runaway uh, verse 
3, King James. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. New International Version, verse 3. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. Roaring versus groaning. Um, waxed old versus wasted away. Again, these are both, these are both, man, that's a good game, man. This is some competition, man. Do you go with wasted away or do you go with waxed old? Again, ah, gosh, I got to go with waxed old. Why? Maybe it's because I'm old. I don't know. But, you know, again, it's like, like, who uses that language, man? Waxed old. And, and I get it, man. It's just like waxed old versus wasted away. Um, if you have a choice, would you rather wax old or waste away? E. Again, I got to go with waxed old. You know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's not a good thing, right? Uh, because it says my bone, while, uh, while I kept silent, um, and you can just feel the pain. While I kept silent, my bones waxed old, wasted away through my groaning or my roaring. So you feel the pain, man, all the day long. Okay, so this one, this one is closer to a tie because they, they both have, have power. You know, if I was to nod, I would nod toward the King James for roaring and waxed um, versus groaning and wasted. So, man, this one here is King James, but just by a slight. So yeah, so King James, man. King James is winning. Verse um, 5. King James. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Silah. Again, that Silah hmm, doesn't show up here in the New International Version. Okay. Oh, yeah, it does. I take it back. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Boom. It's here on the margin here. All right. So, retracted. Retract that. Oh, and it even says here. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. Never mind. But, yeah, it's there. It's there. It's, so, it happens twice in Psalm 32, so, Salah. Um, I wish I knew more about that Salah. Again, my understanding is limited. And so, I do believe um, that it is like a pause, a timeout. Uh, contemplate, you know, what did I just say? How does it apply? You know, how, do, how, how can you appropriate what was just said? How do you relate to that? Um, so, yeah, so now verse, okay, yeah, so verse 5. That was the King James. Verse 5 in the NIV says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgression to the Lord, You for, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Okay, so yeah, so there's, there's, uh, both of those are good. Both of those are good. And, and the reason why they're both good is because it's the idea, right? It's not, it's not how it's being, it's not, um, what's being, or how it's being said, it's what's being said. I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Okay, that's. That's very clear. That's very powerful. NIV scores points right there. Big time. Boom. Verse 5, King James, like I said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. My iniquity have I not hid. And I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou forgave us the iniquity of my sin. Okay. Yeah. So that's, again, maybe maybe the, maybe the NIV wins on this one. Okay. Um. Maybe it's a mer the mercy rule, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna show mercy to the NIV. Okay, yeah. So NIV, I'm a, I'm gonna score you, man. Just because you know I, don't, I hate beating up on the NIV, right? So we're gonna we're whenever we can, we're gonna throw a bone to the NIV. So that's it, right there. Verse five is good. Okay, that's that's a solid win. NIV, good. Okay, verse six, King James. Oh no, let, let's let's make a rule here. Whoever wins the round, they get to start the next round. So, so NIV won this round, so we're gonna start verse six here in the NIV. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely, when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. Okay, I like that. I like that. Verse 6, New International Version. Verse 6, and I, uh, King James. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely, in the flood, 
of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. Okay, that's very poetic. The King James is very poetic here, but it doesn't have the flow that the NIV has here. This is one where I think the NIV um, I'm just rereading it here just to make sure I, I agree with what I just said. So NIV, yeah, so um, NIV says, Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. Okay, we understand what he's saying right here. The mighty waters, even though over here it says floods. I like floods. I don't like, I don't like floods. I like the word floods. Of great waters. Uh, mighty waters. Great waters, mighty. Okay, mighty is better word than great. Uh, shall not come nigh unto him. Will not reach him. Um, come nigh is, is, again, it's that loftier language, which I know, you score points for that big time. But here, um, will not reach him. That's the whole point is that, is that you know, we're protected, right? Um, we're protected. Okay, so again, uh, new inter let's, let's, let's give another point to the New International Version. Okay. New International Version wins that. Okay, so it's, I think it's three or four to two. King James is still winning. Verse seven, NIV. You are my hiding place, and you will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Boom, that's solid, man. NIV, okay, I like that. Verse seven. Verse seven, King James. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. There's another one of those salahs. Okay. Stop and contemplate it. Okay. So um, even though the NIV, dude, that's awesome. I'm going to go with King James here. And the reason being is a bunch of reasons here. Okay. So verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Just that art. Thou art. I like that, man. It's just like, it just flows, man. Rather than you are my hiding place. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve. Now, so you have preserve versus protect. Okay, preserve versus protect. They're both good, but preserve? Would you rather be preserved or protected? I'd rather be preserved. Preserve. Preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about that compass over here says, and NIV says, surround me. So the whole idea is encompassed, in right? Thou shalt compass me about. Uh, again, King James, man, you, you, he's raising, King James is raising the bar here. Compass, like a compass. Surround me with songs of deliverance. Who doesn't want to be surrounded by songs, man? Come on. Especially good songs. Okay, so verse 7, King James. King James is back, back, back in the battle. Okay, verse 8, King James. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. NIV, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. King James, ding, 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 ding. Verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. That just has authority to it, right? right? Boom. And I will guide thee with mine eye. It's like the Lord is like looking at you, right? And he's like guiding you with his eye. You know, I mean, no communication other than just visual, you know, just an eye. Isn't that cool? And he will guide thee with his eye. Um, versus protect me from trouble and surround me. Yeah, so surround me with songs of your own. Oh, I mean, I mean, hang on a second. I won't start getting to teach you with and I will counsel you and watch over you. So the whole idea, you know, watching, yeah, you use your eye and you watch over him, but the guide you, guide thee with mine eye. Um, I like counsel and I like, I like that the Lord's watching out for me, you know, but I like the fact that he's guiding me with his eye. <laughs> King James again, boom. Verse nine, be not, be ye not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held in with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Okay, well, I get the idea there. That's that's like it sounds like a proverb. Um, verse nine over here in the NIV: Do not be like the horse or a mule, which have no understanding, 
and must be controlled by a bit or they will not come to you. Okay, so here, man, it's like you glean from both of these here. The whole idea here is don't be dumb. <laughs> what? It's like, dude, everything that we just talked about is important stuff and we need to like snap to it, right? Don't be dumb. Like one of like these animals here who, who it says here, the words are pretty, um, do not be as the horse or the mule. And we all know that mules are stubborn, right? They, they uh, which have no understanding whose mouths must be held in with a bit or a bridle. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a word picture that, in my mind, it's the, the King James, again, just because of the word picture and the poeticness of it, um, as opposed to just, uh, don't be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding and must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. You know, I get the idea there, and I appreciate that. Guys, I appreciate the New International Version. But King James wins again. Verse, we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Verse 10. Many, uh, King James, verse 10. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall, encom shall compass, here's that word again, compass him about. Um, okay, guys, man, this is, it gets better. Look at that. Um, verse 10. Okay, verse 10 in the New International says, Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts him. Okay, unfailing love is the NIV. Mercy is the King James. Okay, you can't take mercy out of the Bible, guys. Sorry. I mean, his mercy endures forever, right? So to replace uh, unending love with mercy, I don't. I think that's a, dis, a, a disjustice to the to the heart of the Lord, right here. It says, "Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord." Mercy shall compass him about. Okay, guys, do just dwell on that. There's, oh my gosh. Uh, verse 10. Okay, many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts him. Again, the weight, again, is in the King James. Boom, that's an anointed, anointed statement. I'm going to read it one more time just because this is a powerful, this is a heavy hitting. Uh, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but... <laughs> He that trusteth in the Lord mercy shall compass or surround him about. Okay, King James. Last verse, verse 11. Dude, there, there's no way that the NIV can pull this one out. This is a runaway with the King James. Okay, but I'll read the last verse. This is, this is, the, this is okay. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Okay, that's a command right there. Boom. Be glad in the Lord. Okay, uh, verse 11 in the NIV says, Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous, seeing all you who are upright in heart. Okay, so a couple of differences. The rejoice and the glad are backwards. It says rejoice in the Lord in the NIV. Over here it says be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Over here it says rejoice and be glad. So those are two are flipped. That's not really a big deal, but uh, rejoice. It starts off rejoice in the... New International Version, which, which would you rather rejoice or be glad? Hmm, I don't know, man. I'd rather do both. Well, I'm glad it says both here. Uh, sing, or the King James says, shout for joy. Okay, shout for joy, sing, those are both powerful. But what if you can't sing? Oh, I, don't, I can't sing, I got a horrible voice. You can certainly shout for joy. And to be honest with you, um, you don't need to know music theory. You don't need to have a good voice or nothing, man. You can just shout like, yeah! Shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Sing. All right, so, guys. Hands down, King James. King, 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 King. Um, yeah, if you don't have yourself a King James, an analog, you know, everybody's got the digital, the computer version, right? The... Uh, I got two antiques. Look, look, look at that guy. This guy's been around. This guy's been around the block, man. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I didn't put all those in there. I got. I think I obtained this, and it was already uh, well used. I'm guessing there's no name on it. I don't. I don't 
I have no idea where I got this from. To be honest with you, I always used to tease NIV. I used to call it not inspired very much. And I know that's mean and that's, you know, blasphemy or whatever because, you know, maybe their hearts were right about this. I, I know that the modern NIVs, you know, I could re I could do a contrast and com compare between the King James and the modern NIV, dude, and it would be a wipeout. It would be, it would be bloody. <laughs> It would be bloody. All right, so guys, that's my opinion. You know, I, I don't, I, if, if a person, all a person had was an NIV, then absolutely, man, by, by all means, I would definitely uh, recommend it. Um, but King, King James, um, yeah, good old King James, man. Hard to beat, hard to beat, you know. And, and again, you know, the more you read, the, even the more translations you, you comp compare, and um, especially if you're familiar with the Hebrew and the Greek and all the, all of the, all of that stuff, then you're you, you got a head start and stuff like that. But the Holy Spirit will definitely will definitely lead you if you allow Him to. All right, so guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope and I pray that that it will, it's not in vain. That hopefully you guys maybe learned something out of this and stuff like that. So anyhow, until I see you guys again, God bless.